I want to talk about how Huntington's may be a hemolytic disease. A hemolytic disease is something that I stumbled across when I was looking for some research. I stumbled across this, this um, PubMed article here that says increased levels of hemoglobin and alpha-1 microglobulin, microglobulin in Huntington's disease. And it says that the hemoglobin released from damaged erythrocytes is a major pro-oxidant generator of free radicals and inflammatory mediator. Well, erythrocytes are red blood cells. So it's the apoptosis that we were just talking about. It's the destruction of the red blood cells. So when, when they are damaged in anemia, then there's apoptosis. Well, isn't that interesting? What does it have to do with Huntington's disease? This is what I started thinking about. So I found this information about hemolysis. And I started looking at some of the stuff. What is hemolytic disease of the newborn? Okay, and it says basically the hemolytic, um, the hemolytic, some of the, the symptoms of hemolysis are, are jaundice, anemia, and erythroblasts in circulation, okay? And I, so I looked up erythroblasts, and it's basically um, damaged red blood cells. And anemia and jaundice, I remember from when my daughter was a baby. My daughter, as I should say. Both of them were, um, were said to have a little, um, were a little jaundice. One of them more than the other when I brought them home. And so, um, yeah, I just remembered that. And I was like, wait, what? So I start looking more on hemolysis. What is hemolysis? All of a sudden, this stuff comes up with RH negative. And it's talking, this one's in particular is talking about RHCE. It says of individuals who are RH positive, 45% are homozygous and 55% are heterozygous for the RHD gene. Well, what is RH negative? Well, I'd already come across this term for a while in my research, but I didn't quite put it two and two together what does it have to do with Huntington's disease? Basically, what it has to do with Huntington's disease is that when you have um, when you have Rh negative and Rh positive together, then that is hemolysis. It says right here, hemolytic disease of the newborn happens when an RH negative mother has a baby with an RH positive father. If the RH negative mother has been sensitized to RH positive blood, her immune system will make antibodies to attack, to attack her baby. When the antibodies enter the baby's blood, they attack the red blood cells, and this causes them to break down, also known as erythro. Erythro erythroblast, sorry, erythro, erythro, yeah, erythroblast. I'm not very good at pronouncing stuff, but I know what it means. <laughs> My IQ test actually said that I'm really smart with words, but I can't pronounce them, so <laughs> it doesn't sound like I'm smart, but that's okay. Anyway, so basically it, it has a lot to do with RH negative disease. Um, hemolytic disease is two different um two different blood types together causing problems with the dna structure of the individual um from what i understand this can happen during birth with the mother's blood intermixing with the baby's blood or it can happen when you absorb your fraternal twin in the womb um but what's interesting about the RHCE is that 
Let me see if I can. Let's get this. Uh, what's interesting to me about the RHCE is the fact that it doesn't have any antigens. And so that's why it's really hard to see in normal blood work. Um, Okay, so it doesn't really um, show up in blood tests really easily. Um, a lot of times it will still show that you're positive even though you're RHCE because of the weird glutenites. Um, some people don't understand how they should be, how they should look in a normal blood test. And if they tend to um, kind of agglutinate is what it's called, where it shows like lots of little spots and the blood instead of kind of a solid color, then that is um, a blood test that needs to be redone, looking specifically for antigens. But a lot of a lot of blood testing places don't do that unless you're gonna give blood and then they'll be able to tell you probably. So here I just wanted to go over um, the hemolysis research that I found that is regarding an enlarged spleen. Um, when you have autoimmune um, hemolysis, which is something that happens from birth, right? Because they say that Huntington's actually starts in the womb. And I believe that now a full, full heartedly um, from the research that I've done, but the hemolysis is really something that really needs to be talked about. And I don't see a lot of people talking about that when it comes to Huntington's disease. But the hemolysis and the RHCE is basically showing that we are, we are weak D. We have weak RH negative blood inside of us. That weak RH negative blood has a lot to do with a lot. And um, it has to do with the fact why we have an autoimmune disease in the first place. Also, a lot of RH negatives have autoimmune diseases anyway. So we kind of inherited that anyway. Um, and it's really all about understanding how nutrition can help you. And that's why I'm, I'm going through this very detailed, very confusing information for many. Um, but basically, this is something I wanted to show you um, that is in my uh, research here. A lot of these things can be found on my Facebook account. So if you want to follow me, I did leave a link of that in my channel. Um, if you go to my about section, you should be able to find that, um, or uh, just in my channel's, um, cover photo in the tiny right hand corner, you'll see tiny letters. There'll be a little Facebook. You can click on that. So a recent study in the population of the Island of Sardinia showed the association of a non-coding variant in the RHCE gene with an increased erythrocyte sedimentation rate. In other words, an increased erythrocyte um, rate. So the erythrocyte, uh, the sedimentation is just like a breakdown of the red blood cells. This suggests a possible causal effect of the polymorphism on inflammatory markers, despite not being able to find um, the coding region of that gene. And so this is why I believe that Huntington's is so challenging for researchers is because we are missing antigens. It makes sense, right? Because we have this mutated DNA and the, it's mutated so strangely that we're missing certain antigens in order to make certain things work. Well, those missing antigens are what's important because it actually affects the spleen. So what happens in Huntington's disease is that the liver becomes enlarged. And then when the liver becomes enlarged, then the spleen becomes enlarged. And the spleen is right underneath, for women, underneath their left breast. It's like right underneath, like 
where the breast ends, basically. It's underneath your rib cage right there, and that's the spleen. So when I talk a lot about why certain things work for the digestion, and um, it's mostly because I'm, I'm making sure that everything that goes into my body is good for my spleen and good for my liver. So that may be like warm foods. I try not to feed it any cold foods if I can help it. I know that summer's coming, so that might be a little challenging, but maybe it won't be so bad because the heat will be so much worse in the summer. So eating colder foods then may not be a bad idea. But the rest of the year, I don't know about that. <laughs> So the functions of erythrocytes include transportation of oxygen and carbon dioxide. If it's not being able to transport things properly because we don't have enough oxygen in our system, because we're suffering from anemia due to the RHCE and the hemolytic disease, then that's an issue. How can you get more oxygen in your body without actually putting something that you know, a can of oxygen in your body, because I feel like that is like synthetic oxygen and it's not the same. It's not bioavailable to the body. I learned so much over the years about what is bioavailable and what is not bioavailable. If it's bioavailable, that means your body can process it. If it's not, bio, if it's not bioavailable, then your body cannot process most of it and you're just wasting your time eating that. So, <clears throat> the hemolytic disease of the newborn is called ethroblastosis. It's an abnormal presence of ethroblasts in the blood. This condition occurs when there is an incompatibility between the blood types of the mother and the baby, where the ultrasound of the fetus shows that they have an enlarged liver, spleen, or heart, and fluid buildup in the fetus's abdomen. Now, this actually did happen with my second child. My second child did have some of this stuff. So I am highly concerned about my second child, but my second child has actually gotten much better over the years um, with um, different things, that challenges that she's had to go through. Like she had ADHD. She still has that a little bit, but not as much, and dyslexia as well. She was born with the cord wrapped around her neck as well. So she had all kinds of little problems up into the age of probably eight or so. She couldn't buckle her pants until she was eight years old. So she had some issues. And I really believe that this has something to do with it. So I'm hoping all the things that, all the strategies and all the holistic things we've done since then has really helped her because I feel like you know, she's making straight A's now. She's in advanced classes. She shouldn't be in advanced classes, right? If she's she couldn't keep up with them, so she can keep up. She's just, you know, um, she's doing really great. And so I'm so proud of her, uh, of her uh, condition and how far she's come with it. So, um, uh, Since Huntington's disease is um, is defective on chromosome beginning on chromosome four, I just wanted to say go over all the things that have to do with an associated with an enlarged spleen, and it says the generation of AEA was found to be downgraded by combined effect of two major independently segregating dominant alleles one linked to an allele on chromosome 7 and another to chromosome 10. But enlarged spleen was modified mainly by a single allele on chromosome 4. So it goes on to talk about all the different diseases re related to genes located on chromosome 4 that have an enlarged spleen. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but I just wanted to show you here uh, here is hemophilia. Here is hemophilia. Okay. And hemophilia is basically another anemia. Right? So then, Huntington's disease is right underneath that. And then underneath that is hemolytic uremic syndrome which has to do with, it's basically um, 
the urethroblasts that we were talking about and the lack of them. 